All right, how's it going guys? Digitikus here and today I have a little bit of something different for you. It's always gonna be a banger list, but um, today I'm gonna be doing a commentary of them. Um, so it's my match that I had on my stream yesterday and I figured, you know, um, it's always been super intuitive for me and an Elfgard assimilate mirror match like it, it feels like I'm always dominating oh dude that sounds very conceitful but it sounds very condescending but that's how I feel like assimilate the mirror um, it's one of the things that I'm really good at and I figured uh, maybe I'll show you guys um, how do you win how do you try and make the highest possible chance that you're gonna win the assimilate mirror so yeah, um, I figured maybe I'll do a kind of like a casting, kind of like, it's, it's more of like analyzing my match. Um, where did Mr. Opponent go wrong? Where did it, where, where, you know, what kind of choice did I have on that match? What kind of option I was looking at? And why did I make that move instead of that move? Now, I think that's pretty much it for the um, overall general overview of the video is going to be like. I'm mainly going to be discussing why did I make that play, why did I decide to play a card, um, why, did it, why did I not just pass, and all this kind of stuff. And what is the information that's going on in my head. So yeah, let's just jump straight into it. Okay, so right off the bat here, um, I realized that I got red coin. <coughs> Usually, red coin in a Nilfgaard assimilate mirror is very um, is very generous. You don't really need to think much because it's very straightforward. You basically most of the time you're just gonna you know you you won't win round one. It's either you won't win round one or your opponent's gonna try to pass on three cards. So that's like the only two possibilities. It's either opponent push past three cards or opponents um, just gonna pass on after they play three cards. That's pretty much it. <clears throat> and um, so what I'm looking at here is a lot of possibilities. It, like it doesn't because opponent plays the um, the Nelf guard stratagem, the one that locks the unit. Um, I figured they might play a kind of like different list from what most players are playing on a ladder. So I, I'm just trying to be cautious uh, the way I mulligan here. Um, so, so of course, uh, in round one, I don't really want a uh, remedy. I, but I believe I kept one because I have um, Kuda Grow in my hand. So there's a possibility that I could kill one unit and get value out of um, remedy. Yeah, I, I, I immediately kept one and I drew the, um, <coughs> what is this? informant so i'm looking at a line where i could just play informant into one of their uh, uh, bronze cards and then play coup de gras and then play remedy so that's why i kept one here i think i believe like keeping golds in a assimilate mirror like most of the time when you when you have calvid in hand you just want to mulligan your golds away because you want to play into the round right you want you don't want to play your golds and you make basically make your opponent trade golds with you with your bronzes. But in the Nilfgaard mirror, um, I don't think you need to do that. Even though there is a chance that opponent may use their leader for your golds, I think um, I think it's always worth it to just keep your golds because most of the time, you know, it's a Nilfgaard mirror, assimilate mirror. Both players, I think, want to go to a long round. Uh, just kick that. Kicking uh, the Obsidian Mirror, I think it's pretty obvious. Even though it could copy some of their Assimilate units if they played it, but you know, it's that if they played it and it spawns at one power, I don't, I don't think it's that good. Yeah. So, um, opponent played Jan Kalvit here. So, oppo with opponent playing, playing Jan Kalvit, Kalvit um, I figured. That they don't have a bronze that they want to play proactively, so that's why they decided to play on Calvit. Um, usually, you don't really want to play on Calvit unless you're 100% sure that your opponent is assimilate, because there's a chance that 
you know, maybe they're playing double cross mill. So yeah, I, I'm not really a fan of playing Jan Calvit first. Usually I, I test the waters with one bronze. I, I usually play the diplomacy first if I go first. Or I click stratagem into if I have the um, emissary, the four provision card, a spying. Usually I don't start with Jan Calvit against any Nilfgaard deck. So, you know, there's some arguments if you're like 100% sure you're up against a double mirror, you, you're up against um, a simulate. We just play Yankalvit first, that's completely fine. But yeah, generally, I will be careful and not play the Yankalvit first because it, it kind of like gives information to the opponent as well that you don't have any other proactive play that you want to play from your hand. Now, yeah, opponent plays Yankalvit here. Already, I know that this guy is playing um, a simulate. Because, I mean, there's a high possibility that this guy is playing a simulate, even though he has a different strategy here. And yeah, um, we straight up and played the um, Mage Torer here. I think playing Mage Torer is uh, actually really. It's putting Mage Torer, uh, giving Spying Tag to the Jan Kalvit here is actually not bad. Because in a short round situation, if you manage to go to a short round situation, um, playing Brathens, uh, I mean not Brathens, Spring Terra Nova for Jan Calvid is not really, it's not the greatest thing, but it's not that bad either, because it's already 8 points, right? Like, you know, ideally you kind of want to use it on something like, um, you want to you wanna give the spying tag to something like Vigo or Brathens. Like, even to the Rune Mage is actually uh, really good as well. Like, there's the argument that could be made. I should have just saved the Spying Tag for um, a Rune Mage. But I don't really have any other practice play. As I've said before, I don't really want to, you know, play the Jan Calvit. Like, I'm still... Playing Jan Calvit into a Mel matchup just feels extremely bad. <laughs> this is my experience. I don't really want to do that. Um, so therefore, I decided not to play the Jan Calvit. Also, giving, um, making the opponent able to play uh, to give spying tag to Jan Calvit is actually really bad. So most of the time, I reserve to use Jan Calvit on my seventh card instead of my um, instead of a seven or above. You know, I think a seven or lower, because that way I'm forcing the opponent to play a card. So for example, they're at seven cards. Um, I'm at. Um, eight cards. I play the Jan Calvit. <clears throat> if they want to give spying tag to Jan Calvit, they have to play another card, which effectively, um, you know, guarantees me that I won't lose on even, or, or you know, um, or that opponent has to play a card to win the round, to win the round and um, give spying tag to Jan Calvit, which means that I could just safely pass on seven cards instead of trying to go down a card and you know possibly go to a long round three that i don't really want so yeah i immediately play this um Twitter here so one thing that is really good if opponent pass on seven is that because i put spying tag on the calvite um coup de gras immediately becomes a guaranteed seven point play without Without you know, without even the engines, without the similar engines, and it actually acts as um, Jan Kalvit, so that you could just mulligan away your Jan Kalvit, and round two. So for example, if you want to go to round three, because you already played Jan Kalvit to the um, Coda Gra here. In round two, uh, you could just play your Mashi Truffle and then pass, and then you could just mulligan away your um, Jan Kalvit here. You don't have to play an eight four ten. Essentially, you can just play your assembled engines and that feels really nice. So yeah, that's why I really like using the Mage Torter onto the Jan Calvit. So right now, um, yeah, I'm just thinking whether I want to bleed them or do I just want to pass and go to a long round tree. And here comes the Blightmaker. So if you guys didn't know, usually the list does not really run Blightmaker anymore because this card is just really not good <laughs> in a simulate. It's overall a really good card, a, a really good package. Blightmaker with um, uh, Mage Assassin. It's a lot of points. It's 11 points, 10 one card. Overall, it's really good. 
But, you know, it's really good at running away in round one. Like, it's a lot of tempo, I get it. But when you don't draw this card in round one, it becomes really bad. First of all, it's not an engine, it's only a point slam card, 11 points. Um, if you drew the culvert in round one, most of the time you're just gonna draw it in round three anyway, right? And it forces your mulligan, it, it limits your mulligans because Mage Assassin is at five per vision. So after you find a Blightmaker, you cannot really go any lower to find your assimilate cards or to find your Mage, uh, Mage Thorder because, you know, Mage Assassin is at five per vision. If you mulligan away one more card, there's a chance that you're gonna break the Mage Assassin, which feels extremely bad. But, so, because the opponent played Blightmaker here, I figured, <coughs> um, it's gonna be kind of good for me to go to a long round, <coughs> because Blightmaker feels their board very, very quickly, and very inefficiently, inefficiently, alright? So, yeah, I'm just playing the standard play here. This was a mistake. I shouldn't have picked this. This was a mistake. <clears throat> okay, let me let me tell you why. So, in a Nilfgaard mirror, right? You really want assimilate engines. And since this is a double cross mirror, I should know that they have, like, based on the information that I've gotten so far, I should know that they have Mushy Truffle in their deck, right? So by playing the Slave, um, Slave Hunter here, is it Slave Hunter? By playing this card from Imperial Diplomacy, I'm essentially enabling them to choose Slave Hunter on, from my graveyard for their um, Illusionist, <clears throat> right? So they could play Illusionist into Slave Hunter and they don't have to choose the mage torter and why is that a bad thing well because i'm like because they don't have slave hunter and their graveyard going to um second round like if i lose this round and we go to a long round two i have a slave hunter on my graveyard and you know i don't like they don't have mage torter or any um assimilate engines on their graveyard Basically, what will happen is they're gonna play Illusionist into Slave Hunter, and they could just play Slave like we could go into a Slave Hunter mirror, and I won't be able to give Spying Tag to their golds. It's as simple as that. So what will happen is they play Illusionist into Slave Hunter. I'm gonna play Illusionist into their into their um, Mage Order. Or maybe something else, I don't know. But uh, most of the time it's Mage Torer because they're gonna have Mage Torer in their graveyard. So, what would happen is, they're just gonna keep playing um, Illusionist into Slave Hunter. And Illusionist on Slave Hunter is extra one point of value because, you know, it's six with the order ability. It's four points, two damage. So it's six points of value. Instead of Mage Torter, who is only 5 points of value, but it could give Spying Tag. So what would happen is, when opponent wants to give Spying Tag to my um, good gold card, for example, um, Vigo or Brathens, they could so they could just go that, like, it's very easy for them to do that instead of, um, like me, just, I need to wait for them to play Mage Torter to be able to give Spying Tag to their good cards, right? So, Slave Hunter is, slave hunt, playing Slave Hunter is, is a mistake. You don't do this. Thankfully though, Mr. Opponent didn't realize it and they didn't go for the Slave Hunter play. Not to mention, this is also a control card, it's damage too. They, thankfully, in this game, they didn't go for the Illusionist into Slave Hunter play, but that would have been really bad for me. Anyway, there was this. This was... Uh, I didn't think through about this at all. They play Joust. And that's one thing too, like... Usually, you don't play Joust in this deck. Um, instead of Joust... The recent ones, usually they play um, Obsidian Mirror, just like what I've said before. Joust is only a 4, point, uh, four points of damage, it doesn't really do much in this current meta. 
most of the four damage that you know you're gonna get value of is probably like dull blast on a sorceress. Like even then, right? Why don't you just obsidian mirror? Like obsidian mirror is just so much better than joust. But yeah, they play joust. This is really weird. You know, you usually don't run that card anymore. That's fine. So I'm looking at okay. So maybe opponent is playing a really old list of Blightmaker and Joust. Like it's really weird. <clears throat> so yeah, as always, I don't really want to play the Yon Kalavid first because I think the benefit of going to um of opponent not bleeding us is actually really big. Okay, Vial of Orbiter Knowledge. This is a weird card. You don't play this. This card is only 8 points. Like, you know, if you're up against another player that plays Vile, it's... Okay, you know, it's kinda good. Like, you know what their decklist is about and you can plan your game plan from there. From like the first round. But usually, um, when you manage to draw this card in round 1, I don't think it's really that good. It's only 8 points play. It's an artifact. I mean, you know, there's some argument to make for it. Like, this is a really good card to play in round one. It's eight points, but I'm 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 not really sure. Like at this point, I was like, wait, are they trying to fish? <laughs> there's no way they're mill deck, right? I mean, file is kind of like an indication that they're mill deck. Um, this is really weird, but you know, sure. I'm just I'm just gonna assume that this guy is playing um, uh, another uh, assimilate, and I'm just gonna play the Uncle Feet. So I want to get ahead here. <clears throat> I simply just I just use um, Kudagra here into the um, Uncle Feet, and we're gonna go to a long run. So I think that's pretty much it. But they decided to play another card. I think it was really good for me. I believe at this point I just passed because there's really nothing meaningful for me to do. And I think the good thing is, is I think they played Mage Thorder, if I remember correctly. They chose Mage Thorder and I just passed. There's really nothing <clears throat> left to do. Oh, wait, yeah, Illusionist. Yeah, Enter the Major. Like, I don't know why they did this. Like, dude, they could have just chose Slave Hunter and I would have been toast. Literally, I would have been toast. Oh, my bad. I would have been toast. But they chose the Major. Like, I. Yeah, dude, sign me up. Thank you. <laughs> It's really bad for me. It was looking really bad. Because I don't have any target for the thingy for Illusionist and they have a target. They have an Assimilate unit. <clears throat> but thankfully, thankfully they... Oh man, this is... This was looking bad for us. So guys, uh, remember, you need to be thinking what your opponent is going to do, right? It's very crucial, it's very important. To notice what your opponent is lacking and what their moves gonna look like right this is really bad for me but thankfully opponent played the major that's why I don't really have to worry that much and I'm just gonna you know chill here with all my golds there's really okay guys there there's some argument that you want to just kick your golds away because it's mirror and your opponent might just play your golds with their litter ability and they're gonna bleed you to death like they're gonna bleed you a lot they're gonna bleed you hard but i think it's totally fine like usually they if they chose to mulligan away their golds if opponent chose to mulligan away their golds and decided to bleed only with bronze they're not gonna have enough points to get a card on us if we play our golds 
And Nilfgaard bronzes combined like with all their similar engines, I think it's good enough to win a short round. So there's really no reason to just mulligan away your golds. You just want to keep them. And I'm doing a pretty uh, like standard move here, the same move as Mr. Opponent. And I'm totally fine with um with this. It's crazy. Okay, uh, I'm gonna show you guys the mistake that opponents did. Like, very obvious mistake. Is that they're playing Illusionist. Sure, they might be trying to kind of like fill the board as fast as they can. But you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Because Coup de Gras exists in Nilfgaard. <laughs> Okay, so this. Oh, Dungeons in the format. The best roll. The best roll. And notice how I use it on the mace order here. See? I don't use it on the illusionist. And now look at this. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards in their board, and I only have five. <coughs> right? So. I think I'm looking like really good here. The moment they decided to play Illusionist on their board, I knew that I, I'm in a good place. There is no way I'm kind of like losing this. Because look at this. What's their target on Coup de Gras and, I mean, Coup de Gras and um, Terra Nova? None. They have not used a single, they have not inflict, they have not tagged one of our units with spying yet. None. They chose to go for the um, illusionist here instead of um, <coughs> uh, torture. Like you could argue that giving spying to illusionist doesn't really do much, but uh, dude, ideally, I think you always want to go to you, you. Like the thing you're looking for in an assimilate mirror is to fill their board and have cards that doesn't need to be played on their board. Like, you want to play the cards that fill your opponent's, for, uh, opponent's board first. That's the essence of Nilfgaard's Mirror. You want to fill their board, but you, wanna, you don't want to fill yourself. Because it's very easy to fill your board in a assembled mirror. Don't, you don't want to do that. I believe they're going to play Vigo here. A reasonable play. And look at what they're choosing here. Dude, they they are able to choose five from their pulls, right? From their bronzes pulls. So I believe they missed uh, informant. But since they're playing a similar deck, I believe they should have a misery. But look at this. They chose to play illusionist. They're thinking like, how I'm gonna fill my board so you can play. So they're probably thinking that I'm gonna fill my board so that you won't be able to play your assimilate units. You won't be able to play your spying units. And you know what happened? I just filled their board. And they can't fill mine. And I have a spying tag on both. So even if I play Terra Nova, right? Even if I play Terra Nova, I could just use Terra Nova onto the Rune Mage and not to the Brathens or the Vigo. It's very easy. Like, I don't need to play, I don't need to, you know, fill their boards. Look at my cards here. Um, I could play Lydia for like Joust, for like Assassination, for like um, uh, the 5 damage. Like, I don't need to use, like, all these cards are not required to have a row space for, like for opponents to have a row space in their board like i could just play them and i would chill right and even now i could just still play a bronze or a coup de gras and they, like look at this they don't have any spying on our units really bad for them 
They're filling their rows and they don't have any spine throw units. And they play their bribery? Would they play their bribery? What? Oh no, it's, it's on my deck, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I believe like right now I'm looking at their hands and I, I, there's only a handful of cards that could be in their hands. It's probably Terra Nova, Brethens, uh, Invocation, Bribery, and something else. Probably in, um, Coup de Gras. So, Terra Nova, Brethens, Coup de Gras, Bribery, and um, Invocation. Did I say Invocation? Terra Nova, Brethens, Coup de Gras, Invocation, Bribery. Okay. Those five. But it's Heat Wave. Wow. Okay, so they're. Playing the heat wave instead of invocation, or are they playing both? Right? Because I've seen people that plays both. So they kinda like, um, I just wanna get rid of your carryover, but I'm gonna play mine, so uh kinda like a really weird play. And look at this, I you know, I yeeted your six plus five, your eleven, maybe twelve, maybe thirteen points of play. And I used mine for a mere 10 points of play. You, I don't think you want to do that. It could play for a lot more. Trust me. This uh, kind of got reconnected. And then I'm just, I'm just very confident in playing the Brethens here. Because you know what? They, if I play the Brethens here, they won't be able to copy it unless they play another card. Right? I'm just gonna play the. Um, uh, Lucian is here for the extra 4 points, because I don't believe that they're gonna be able to fill our boards, like, we're still, like, very big chilling, they only have, like, what, 5, 6, six spaces left? And this is also one of their mistakes. You should check this out. They're gonna use their leader ability here, they have a spying tag on the Brethens, and look at what they chose. Those Ter they choose Terra Nova. So, you know, at this round, Terra Nova is a lot of points. I'm just gonna let them finish their play first. So, at this round, Terra Nova is indeed a lot of points. And it, you know, it fills their board very quickly so that we won't be able to play our, um, our cards. But let me tell you why this is a really bad thing. So, first of all, they only have one board space left, right? So, whatever their last two cards are, could be Invocation, could be Bribery, could be Lydia, could be anything. If I play one Spying Units, they're locked out of it, right? And I know for sure that they're gonna have um, Coup de Gras here. And since I have a spying tag on the rune mage, I could also just play Terra Nova for rune mage, and I don't have to play it for a spying unit because I still have a, one more spying unit here on the um, uh, remedy. I could use it on the informant or the um, emissary that I played in round one. Or oh wait, no, I, I didn't play emissary. Like I could still use the remedy for a spying unit, but since you know we're like 50 points behind. I figured that it's fine to just use the breath and see, uh, to just use the Terranova here and, you know, fill their board, essentially. Yeah, I'm just looking at Terranova. Like, they're gonna have Terranova, but I still have a leader, right? So, there are a couple lines of play that I'm looking at here. Is that I could play Terra Nova, like I'm not really sure what the best sequencing is. It's either the durability into Coup de Gras or um oh wait, I don't have um I don't have a spying tag here, my bad. Yeah, because I was thinking that I could have used Coup de Gras onto the Brethens and just fill their board that way. And I should play that um, Terra Nova for um, Mage, uh, I mean Rune Mage, in case it wasn't really play. So I'm just gonna play Terra Nova for um, Vigo. Like, it could be Emissary or 
uh, informant. But I'm really glad I got the emissary. Like ideally, ideally, we could get informant, give spying tag to the Brethens, and we should play uh, our leader ability into coup de gras right here. So it's coup de gras, um, Terra Nova, and bribery. So we could we could have used coup de gras into the um, rune mage. I think that would have been a lot more points. Like if we managed to get the um, informant through Vigo, informant um, spying into Terra Nova. I mean, I don't know. But it should be fine, right? I, I'm not counting the math at all. This is purely by in instinct. But yeah. Coup de Gras is just actually really insane. More than the, um... The, uh... Turn over here. Look at this. We're actually getting more points on them. We're actually getting a card. And what do you know? Coup de Gras is an Echo card. They don't have any emissary to use their... They don't have any play. At all. Coup de Gras, Bribery, and Turnover. They can't play any of those. Right? They're, they're locked. They can't do anything. Because their board is full. And this is the power of um, not using... Uh, uh, like, you know, playing a lot of spying cards and not choosing Illusionist. Now look at this, we have, um, we have a coup de gras here. So, this is also one of my mistakes. Um, this is really a fatal mistake that thankfully opponent did not notice because you can see that two of my hands are basically coup de gras, right? But thankfully, here I have um, two remedies, so it's, it's not really a problem. Excuse me, guys. Like, right now, the only thing that would allow me to use Coup de Gras is actually giving the opponent's unit spying tag, right? And I played, like, I played Illusionist here. Like, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm supposed to um, go for just simply resting the um, Mage Thorder here. I'm not really sure on that front because I like I'm just giving opponents since they don't really need to give spying to their units to opponents' units. Like, I'm not really sure whether this is the correct play. Because for all I know, opponent could just not play any mage store and not give me the informant value, right? Since they did that, you know. But since they played um, Terra Nova into Brathens, into this, and not into a Slave Hunter, mind you. This, they should have 100% used this on the Slave Hunter, right? Now they're giving me one extra assimilate value on the mage loader. Like they could have just used freaking slave hunter, but they chose to use mage loader. They could have gotten one extra point. That was my mistake. I feel so kind of like lucky in a way. They didn't caught on to that. But yeah, now because they played their turnover earlier, there's, um, you don't, because you know, my, my hand, you know, opponent knows my hand. It's basically two coup de gras, one bribery, and some bronze cards that could give spying tag. They should know that, but they chose to play the Brethens first. I mean, uh, Ternova first. It's really good for me. Now I'm just chilling. Like, the moment they play Ternova, I knew I win. It's my win. I'm up a card, and I have two better. Terranova. It's a Terranova that damages three. <laughs> like, what? it's a created Terranova that damages a unit by three. There is no way I lose. 
after this like even if my bribery was like very bad i knew that it's it's just not happening uh, uh mistake here i should have uh, i shouldn't have played the um created kudograph first i should have gone for the 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 kudograph for my deck from my starting deck because you know the created one triggers the simulate so i effectively i lost like um uh three points here which is kind of like a lot but i don't think it matters that much but yeah um i don't play the illusionist here as as you know as i've said before you don't really want to fill your board you basically just want to play your spying cards you know they're gonna play their own coup de gras onto the terra nova but now i noticed that you know we're kind of chilling we're not really gonna fill our board and i'm just gonna play the illusionist here all right so um yeah it is very straightforward here look at this um they're gonna have coup de gras into the terra nova but we're still gonna have bribery into possibly terra nova we're just chilling and there's no way for them to fill our board so we're very flexible and you know in playing the lydia here we could just play it melee or rage ideally we kind of want to play it melee to get a chance to try and dig for a remedy remedy into spying unit is really good but i'm gonna play the bribery first so yeah i'm just really scared that i won't be able to play the lydia on the melee row they might still uh, so you know they're one lost their lost cards are probably something like I don't know bribery yeah illusionist here and to um illusionist and to um I mean, Brethren is into Lucianus because we didn't get, we didn't manage to get the Terra Nova. Yeah, don't really want to, you know, play it on the melee because of Lydia. Kind of want to play Lydia on the melee side, but you know, what is this? Mage Infiltrator, Psh, get out of here. Lydia, we got the Remedy, very cool. And a Mystery, fill their board. Very nice. So, you know, I don't think their last cards could be 60 points here. A pretty wide margin. Uh, that is the nature of it. We, in this round, we are able to play two Terra Novas. Two created Terra Novas. They played one Terra Nova from their hand and one created. But we played two created Terra Nova. Like, look at this. We have the same amount of Brethens. We have the same amount of Terra Nova. But why is our points bigger? Well, maybe it's just card quality. I still have Lydia and they don't have Lydia. Their Lydia is actually only a mage infiltrator. But still. Managed to win by solid 50 points. It's very good. And yeah, I, I believe that's going to be it for the video. Um, so I'm just going to wrap it up here. Um, and yeah, what do you guys think of the video? Um, like, you know, let me know. What do you think about it? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make some new content around Gwent. I, I still really like commentary on Gwent, like casting, live casting and stuff. But I figured that when playing live, it's quite hard to do commentary in Gwent, um, especially. Like, in a situation where you have to think, it's actually really difficult to give commentary and... Um, you know be focused on the match so i figured that i should just give you guys the gameplay quality even though like i can't like i should give you guys gameplay quality and at the same time a better um commentary uh commentary on it but that would mean that i can't really play three games because casting three games and recording three games basically means that i doubled the the, the hours that i put into the work so I don't think I can really do that, but hopefully um, you guys like this type of content. Let me know what you think down in the comment below. Would you rather see 
um, simply live commentary on three matches or a, you know, a better gameplay and a better commentary on just one match. Um, so yeah, if you enjoyed the video, go like, subscribe, and um, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.